Okay, hello everyone. My name is Rahul Kanyal, and I'm very excited to present the work done with Professor Smriti Sarangi on Panopti Chrome, uh, which is an in-browser dynamic paint analysis framework for the Chromium browser. Uh, now, websites contain a lot of third-party scripts from a lot of domains, and any bug or unpatched vulnerability in any one of the script might lead to problem like this, where user-sensitive data might get leaked to a remote attacker via a, a network request, or the site might get vulnerable to DOM cross-site scripting or an open redirect vulnerability based on uh, the vulnerability in the script. Now, similarly, problems like fingerprinting, crypto jacking, and other problems might also arise due to these uh, vulnerability in the third-party scripts. Now, most of these problems can be modeled as an information flow graph where the information flows from users' uh, sensitive data or an attacker-controlled parameter in the URL to a sync like eval or a network request with the user's data. The flow of information could be either explicit, uh, direct, or indirect called implicit flow via control flow statements. Now, statically performing an information flow analysis for JavaScript is very difficult since it has functions like eval and features that allow the code to monkey patch itself during runtime. Furthermore, properties like prototypal inheritance and dynamic typing uh, when paired with obfuscation and encryption make the analysis even harder in case of static analysis. Hence, dynamic analysis, and especially in-browser dynamic analysis, is the most feasible approach, since it also provides uh, complete access and most realistic access to web GPU, web RTC, and various other APIs. Now, the problem with prior in-browser dynamic analysis approaches is that they're very hard to code, and hence, they have a fixed set of sensitive endpoints, and this makes the framework non-extensible for further use cases. Moreover, they need to patch all the possible information flows in the JavaScript engine, which makes the framework uh, non-maintainable over a period of time. Other problems are also, since because of the complexity of the JavaScript engine, they cannot cover all data types or they lack the inability or they lack the ability to track information flow through all data types and all uh, flow paths. Hence, we created Panopticrome and which is an open source framework that solves a lot of existing problems. The patches of Panopticrome uh, Okay, the patches of Panopticrome are limited to the V8 engine of the uh, Chrome browser, and uh, they do not encompass any uh, embedder of the V8 engine. Hence, they can be like uh, encapsulated in other frameworks like Node.js and Electron. And at the heart of Panopticrome is a novel taint marking and generation engine, and uh, that can mark any object property pair that is defined via a simple configuration file in JSON format as a sensitive source, and then it can um, propagate the taint at runtime. And also it is platform agnostic. We have tested on Linux and Android, and uh, that can track information flows across all data paths and all across both explicit and implicit flows. Now, Panopticrome works by modifying the bytecode generator of the V8 JavaScript engine to emit instrumented code that uh, traps into runtime functions and uh, that are responsible for both taint marking and propagation. Panopticrome needs to modify only three bytecode builders and eight AST visitors. And the hooks for instrumented codes are inst inserted at the end of each basic block, start and end of each function call, and the assignment and access to an object property. <laughs> Panopticrome maintains multiple tables that store the taint status of runtime objects uh, during execution. So uh, the primary table in the Panopticrome is an object taint table that maps the tagged heap pointer or the location of each JavaScript runtime object in memory to the encoded uh, list of corresponding taint sources. Also, since the garbage collector relocates and removes all the runtime objects that are not reachable from the JavaScript source code and these tables that we define, are not defined in the JavaScript source code, we need to do something special with these tables. And uh, for this, we implemented a custom persistent ephemeron hash table inside V8 engine that interlinks the lifetime of runtime object with the encoded taint source. And uh, the taint source in the tables goes out of scope only when all the runtime objects contained in the table are uh, garbage collected. And uh, AST taint table and AST to object mapping table, that we'll explain later. Uh, are also implemented as garbage collector safe multi-level hash tables that are indexed initially by the frame pointer 
of the function and the execution, and then the unique location in the AST, in the abstract syntax tree. Now, uh, for taint marking at runtime, we uh, collect all, we collect data like execution context, object and property data, along with call arguments and return value uh, at the instrumented code level. And to identify the current environment and mark the object property pair as sensitive, if the configuration parameter lists the name as sensitive in the from the configurable parameters. Now, uh, the configuration parameters are uh, follows a simple format of object name, included properties, and excluded properties in the JSON format. And uh, the taint marking engine can also handle prototypal inheritance, object reassignment, re renaming, and global objects when the name exactly do not correspond to the uh, values marked in the your configuration file. Now, for taint propagation, we follow an order independent interrupt procedural analysis similar to that of MISTI uh, in CCS 2018, but with more expressive context that can also generate taint along with propagation. Now, for taint propagation, initially a flow graph is generated along with the instrumented code. And during the execution, whenever the document.cookie, which is a sensitive uh, API, is accessed, the taint marking engine. Uh, marks the runtime object corresponding to the document.cookie as tainted in the object taint table, and the corresponding AST node is marked sensitive in the AST taint table. Now, during the invocation of xhr.send, uh, which is a sensitive function as well uh, for, for sending out the uh, data, uh, a taint propagation routine is invoked that performs the reachability analysis from the tainted source in the AST marked number one. And this marks with this reachability analysis, we mark node number two and three as uh, sensitive as well. Now, using a AST to object mapping table, uh, we find all the we find the actual runtime object corresponding to these nodes, and then we mark them as sensitive as well. Uh, to evaluate Panopticrom, we marked uh, to evaluate Panopticrom. We focused on the web APIs that are used to provide functionalities like WebRTC, WebSocket, et cetera, to JavaScript. We categorized all the possible 7,000 APIs into 106 bins, and then marked all the network and storage related APIs like uh, uh, XHR, send beacon, post message as things in all the rest APIs as sensitive sources. We then parallelly crawled the top 20,000 websites with Panopticrome built over Chromium version 117. And then uh, we observed that 5,673 unique APIs out of those 7,000 are accessed and uh, with a maximum of 144 APIs that were leaked simultaneously from a single origin. That is data from all those APIs flowed, flowed uh, directly or indirectly to a taint sync. And we discovered that on an, on average, location APIs account for the highest leakage from a website uh, with 32.4% of the total leaked APIs being from the location category. Performance and screen APIs follow closely with 21.6% and 12.1%. And we further analyzed the collected data to identify uh, all the APIs that are sent together in a single packet through a single taint sync. And prior researchers have observed that fingerprinting techniques that aim to uniquely identify the user and browser often club these, uh, often club the data obtained from various APIs together and then send them and then form a unique identifier with that data, which is then exfiltrated to a remote server. So for this, uh, if the number of APIs that are sent together in a single taint sync exceed a predefined uh, threshold, predefined number of known fingerprinting APIs, we mark all the remaining APIs as sensitive as well. We observe that with a threshold of zero, 406 APIs were marked sensitive and uh, out of which 89.16% were eventually found to be uh, of potentially fingerprinting nature. And with a threshold of 12 known fingerprinting APIs, only 92 APIs are marked suspicious, out of which 96.74% are then determined to be of potentially fingerprinting nature. With this method, we discovered a total of 362 APIs and that have the potential of being used for browser fingerprinting, out of which 200 APIs were never reported by prior works. So, uh, in conclusion, we developed an embeddable, customizable, dynamic, and complete uh, 
taint analysis framework for Chrome, which is platform agnostic. We introduced an old taint marking engine that allows us uh, to mark any object property pair as uh, taint source or sync. Then we characterized the data transfer for the top 20,000 websites and discovered 208 potential fingerprinting APIs that were previously uh, uh, previously not reported by any state of the art. Thank you.